All right, super. Welcome to the People Building live broadcast. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you today about um, using NLP for conflict resolution purposes. Uh, we will be recording this particular video today and sharing it on the People Building YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash people building. You'll be able to download tons of other videos on the uh, People Building YouTube channel there, all with regards to different hints and tips around your self-development. So the technique that I'm going to share with you today is it was designed actually specifically for conflict resolution um, and it can be used in other areas as well but I'll talk to you a little bit more about those as they come up and I'm just going to see who is joining us today um, because I don't think I can see everybody's details. Let's have a look. Ah, that's better. All right, good stuff. So we've got six people here today. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Um, all right, so here's what we're going to do. When we are looking at conflict resolution in the context of using NLP techniques to assist us with that, um, there's a specific process that we use. It's called perceptual positions. You have to be quite careful how you say that one. So it's perceptual positions. Um, and what this allows you to do is it allows you to step into the shoes of the person that you are experiencing conflict with to give you the opportunity to see things from their perspective. Because that's the thing with being in a conflict with someone else is that we're very focused on how we're thinking, how we're feeling and how the situation affects us. When we start to see things from the perspective of someone else, it gives us not only an insight into their world, but it also gives us an opportunity to maybe adjust how it is that we are uh, pitching what it is that we want them to know and understand um, and maybe to start finding some form of compromise with them. So here's how the technique works when we use it in uh, our NLP therapeutic sense. Typically it involves chairs. Um, so we have the person sit down in a few different uh, perspex as in glass, fake glass, no, uh, perceptual position, so not perspective. Um, so uh, yeah, seeing things from a different perspective, not perspex, that's weird. Um, all right, so here's how it works. I'm gonna draw the chairs. I'm not great at drawing chairs, but you'll get the idea. So we have three different chairs. So there's the backs of the chairs and the arms of the chairs. So you can see how they're laid out. That's like a bird's eye view looking over the top of the chairs. So we have chair number one, we have chair number two, and then finally we have chair number three. Depending on, uh, I'm not a doctor, no, but I am a therapist, and I'll explain a little bit more about that towards the end. So depending on um, what the scenario is, i.e. how many people are involved in the conflict, it may require that we need more chairs. But for the purposes of explaining this to you in a really simple and straightforward way, we're just going to assume that there are two people in a conflict situation with each other. So in chair number one, this one up here, we ask our client or the person that we're working with to sit down in a chair and be themselves. So they just have to think about the situation that they're in, think about this conflict scenario from their very own perspective. So here they are there. And we ask them a series of questions. Um, if you're gonna swear at me, go away. You don't need to be here. Any old chair, the chair's not relevant actually. Um, it can be any kind of chair and they don't even need to be sitting in a seat. They could be standing. Um, so, but you'll understand why this is important in just a second. So in chair number one, they're going to be themselves and we ask them a series of questions about how they think about the situation and what they feel about it. So we might say, um, What's your view on the situation at the moment? Why do you feel the way that you're feeling? What do you want to have happening in the future from this scenario? Then we ask them to move to a different position. So typically this is going to be a different chair. In chair number two, they're going to take on the perspective of the other person. Now they could just move to somewhere different in the room, but if we get them seated in a different physical chair, um, this can be useful to us for a couple of reasons. So what we can say is stand up, 
move to the new chair and when your bottom touches that seat so as soon as your bottom lands on the cushion i want you to take on the persona of the person that you're currently in this conflict with so you need to think like they think if they've got particular mannerisms that they use then use those mannerisms. If there's specific phrases maybe that they say or a certain way of speaking, start doing that because that will really help you to see things from their perspective. So if, they, if there's no chairs available, it's fine, but get them moving to a different physical location. That's important. It's important that they get up and they stand somewhere else. It doesn't have to be into a new chair, but it's helpful if it is. So if there's no physical chair there available, you'd say, I want you to move to this spot on the floor. And in that new spot, you're going to take on the persona of this other person, just like a role play exercise. So you're gonna think like they think, use the sorts of words and phrases that they, uh, that they want to use um, and that they typically use and start seeing things from their situation. Now I see someone saying there, but people don't want to see things from another person's perspective. Well then they shouldn't really be in a conflict resolution scenario. So this video is all about resolving a conflict and to resolve the conflict, you do need to start seeing things outside of your own point of view. This is what this enables us to do. If they don't want to see things from the other person's perspective, perhaps they're not really ready to resolve the conflict yet. And that's fine, but we're working on the basis here that they do, that actually they want to move the situation forwards. Um, please don't swear on here, thank you very much. All right, so number three position is the observer. Now, once we've had our person sitting in chair number two, where they take on board the perspective of others, what we do whilst they're there is we ask them very similar questions to what we ask them over here in chair number one. So we're going to be saying things like, uh, what are you focusing on? So what are they focusing on in the situation? Um, what do they want to have happen? What do you want? Um, how would you like the future to resolve in this situation? So just think about things that are moving them from where they are now to where they want to go. We don't want to be keeping reflecting back on the past. Instead, we're going to be talking about what's the current situation and what do you want to have instead? So we do that in chair number one. And then we get them doing it whilst they're role playing in chair number two. So whilst they're in position number two, thinking about the person that they're in the conflict with, we can ask very similar questions. What are you focusing on? What do you want to have happening instead? How has the situation not resolved itself yet? What's keeping you stuck there? Now, position number three, so this is our third chair. We then say, okay, up you get, move to a different physical location and we're gonna move you into chair number three now. In chair number three, they become the observer. And the observer is someone who is completely unattached to the situation. So just as if we went out onto the street and had someone who came in and had watched the scenario so far, they'd heard about the person talking from their own perspective, and they'd heard about them talking from the point of view of the person that they're in the conflict with. And they're going to give a completely outside view of the scenario now. So just like you guys are here, it's not taking sides necessarily. It's actually more about, okay, I've heard what that person said. I've heard what that person said. And here's my separate and humble opinion. So they have to be quite detached from the situation as they do this. So same sorts of questions, except this time we're going to be addressing the observer. And uh, so it's our, it's our original person who had the issue, but we're going to be saying, okay, just be outside of this. See this from an outside perspective. What do you think should happen next? What are you focusing on? And what do you think the ideal resolution to this scenario is? Now, when they go back to chair number one, they've then got the insight from the person that they've had the conflict with and their perspective on the situation and the outside observer's perspective on the situation too. 
does that person chair the meeting? Um, so no, you're going to have to work, it would be two people working together. So typically in my role, what I'm doing as a therapist is I'm like the, the chairman, I'm facilitating it. I would be asking the questions and moving the person from one chair into another. If we don't have chairs available, then we would just move them physically around the room. So we would have them standing in different physical positions. And here's why that's important. So there's a great article that you can go and look up and it's called Creative Distance. And what this article tells us, it's as a result of a study in a university where they used two groups of university students. And in the very first group, they gave them the project of uh, coming up with different ideas about what to do with some um, produce that was uh, grown in a field and the produce was corn. So they said, what could we do with this corn? And the group came back and they came up with good ideas, but the ideas were very immediate. And they were sort of saying, oh, we could use it to make cereal, um, or we could use it for feeding animals, and all of these sorts of ideas. Then they got the second group to do a very similar but slightly different project. With the second group, they said to them, we need you to come up with ideas about what we could do with the produce grown in this field, and the produce that's been grown is corn. But the field is 15,000 miles away. It's in a different country. What sorts of things do you think we could do with the corn that's been grown in a field 15,000 miles away? Now, the ideas that came back were actually much bigger. They were much more creative. So they were talking about using it for different fuel sources and much more vast like bigger ideas, much more well-developed ideas. And the theory is that when you have perspective on something, you're able to generate more useful solutions for yourself. You're able to come up with more ideas. And that's what this technique allows us to do. Because when you're in a conflict scenario, sometimes you can't see how to tackle it properly because you can't see the wood for the trees. You're just stuck in it. You know, sometimes you can't see past your own thinking. Whereas when you step out of it and you're forced into a situation where you role play as someone else, or you have to become an observer and have a slightly more impartial perspective on things, then it allows you to get some creative creative distance on it is the technical uh, terminology around it. So we're giving people the opportunity to develop creative distance on their conflict scenarios and to come up with better solutions that they perhaps wouldn't be able to access if all they were doing was stuck there being themselves and stuck in chair number one. So that's how the technique works. You don't need the three separate chairs, but you do need the three separate perspectives. If they don't reach a solution, that's a really good question. Here's what you can do. Um, you can build more perspectives into this. So I use this technique quite often with children uh, because children are always getting themselves into conflict scenarios. Um, and what you can do with kids is to really play with it. You can do things like, okay, well, what would the perspective be of uh, a superhero that you really like? What advice would they be giving? What would the advice of your teacher be? And get them to really step into some alternative roles and to give themselves some feedback that way. Because the great thing with this is it's not then you saying, I think you should do this. You need to take this next step. Sometimes people can be a bit resistant to advice. What this technique does is it gets them giving advice to themselves instead. And very often the best kind of advice comes from within. All right. Any other questions? Any other useful questions today? I've had a lot of swearing on here today. What's going on with you guys? Hi, Jeff. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. Any more for any more? All righty. I'm going to wrap it up. So, um... We do these live broadcasts on a Monday, typically at 6 p.m. Um, it's all hints and tips around your personal and self-development. If you weren't able to tune into the entire recording today, it will be published on our YouTube channel, which is People Building. And you can go to the People Building YouTube channel, find the previous videos with different hints and tips around your uh, anxiety, depression, or any other sorts of issues that you might have. I look forward to speaking to you again next time. Bye for now.